Hi, I'm Simon Kidd from Snowby and we're here today at the beautiful Wimbledon Lake. Wimbledon Lake is a big lake. It's here in, on the edge of Exmoor National Park on the southeast corner and it's 374 acres in total and it's got some lovely arms and it's great for bank fishing and boat fishing as well. The dam itself is based at this end on the south corner and it's actually at the bottom of the Hadio River that was dammed in the 70s it was made and finished in 1979. And the dam itself stands at 49 metres high. So it's a substantial water, but it's actually got a benefit because down here in the West Country, when it gets particularly warm in the summer, it's got plenty of depth in there, which is something that's really important because it's got some cold water and the rainbow trout especially love some nice cool water in the summer. They can struggle a bit when it gets a bit too warm. So that makes it a great fishery right through the summer. It's a wonderful place. The bank fishing is superb and we're in for a really good day sport today. In our last video, we looked at some basic casting techniques and today we're going to look at some more advanced casting techniques and look at the double haul in particular. Conditions are lovely, it's overcast at the moment, there's a very light breeze, it's going to probably step up to about 9 miles an hour today, something like that. It's going to warm up as well when the sun comes out. We've had a look at the lake already, there's fish moving on the top and we're in for a really good day's fishing. come down to the water's edge here now, we're in the Sailing Club Bay and um, there's a few fish moving, a few fish rising, so that's quite, um, quite good as well. So I've just seen a fish landed from a boat over there in the distance too, which is quite encouraging. In the background we can hear the rooks calling and everything as well, it's absolutely beautiful here just now. Uh, my rod of choice is, um, to start with, I've got a 10 foot 7 weight rod here, which is ideal for a big still water of this nature. The fly line I'm using is the Spectre fly line, it's a new fly line been designed purposely for modern day fly rods, especially with nanotechnology. It's fractionally heavier than normal lines, but it's got a longer head to achieve that. It's got a 47 foot head instead of a standard 42, 42 and a half foot, which most fly lines have got. It's also 120 foot long in distance as well, in length, um, as opposed to a traditional fly line, which is about 90 feet. So there's an extra 30 feet available when casting this off the bank, or from the boat for that matter, but off the bank in particular as a distance casting line. Uh, that 30 feet, that's three rod lengths uh, in distance more than a standard fly line. And, um, when you're fishing from the bank on a, on a venue like this, sometimes it can really help to reach those extra fish that are just that bit further out as it slopes away, usually about 10, 12 foot of water, something like that. Uh, the leader I've got made up is, is eight pound leader. I've got fluorocarbon on here and I've put on three flies. I've started with 16 feet uh, as a leader. I've got two droppers, first one at about eight feet and then I've got another one in between, uh, between there and the, and the point fly, which is an attractor pattern, a small attractor pattern, which has got uh, a bit of foam in it as well, just keep it high in the water on the point, a bit like a washing line style. Then I've got an olive uh, buzzer on the, on the middle dropper here, and then at the top I've got another one that's a black fly, uh, and that's a, a black dial back I've got on the top there as well. Black early season, it's always a popular colour to use. Uh, you know, here's my tractor patterns in here, and then I've got just small nymphs and so on. I, I tend to use barbless flies, I prefer that these days, especially in competition anyway, we're not allowed to use barbs, so most of my flies are barbless today. Uh, and I say I've got I've got different olive pattern on the middle dropper, just changing the colours a little bit so the fish themselves have got a bit of choice if they're feeling a bit fussy, and that suits me. Just a quick recap then. From the last video we looked at the basic fundamentals of casting, so I'm just going to recap on those quickly. The most fundamental exercise to start with of course is the roll cast. So there's a roll cast just to get a bit of line out and everything. And, and as we take line off the reel, it doesn't do any harm to give it a bit of a stretch because it can have a bit of memory in there and it's quite easy just to stretch it out like that. So basic roll cast, we make a D, here's the D, pull it out there. You can, actually, you can actually do a small haul with the left hand as we unfold that D as well. So we go from there and as I pull it forward, I just pull it all on my left hand. That little bit of a pull will come in later when we talk about the haul as well. So my left hand is gripping the line here. I'm going to put, make a D, roll it forward and just pull with my left hand as I do so. And that gives a little bit more flex in the rod to put the line out on the water. We then go to the basic overhead cast. And the basic overhead cast, if you remember, we peel, pluck, pause in the back cast and tap like we're popping a nail into a wall. Okay, so it's very simple. Bit of a peel as we lift it off, makes a little V on the water. We peel, pluck, pause and tap. Okay, and that's the fundamental cast of overhead casting. Um, to, to do the advanced cast, we've got a distance out there. We're probably, I don't know, 40, 50, 60 feet, something like that maybe. Um, I'm just going to pop the line out a bit more and I'm going to feed some more line off the, off the reel now. And at this point here, you'll see is the back of the head. 
This is where the line changes colour. So the head itself has got a profile. On the front five feet, it's tapered to form a nice presentation on the end, so it turns over nicely to present our flies. We've then got a, a long body, which is a, uh, a regular diameter, all the way back until the back of the, of the rear taper, or the front of the rear taper, rather. And the rear taper is eight feet long, so the rear taper is starting almost at the end of the rod there and running to here, where the rear taper finishes. And that then goes on to our thin running line. So at this point, when this thin running line, the colour change is at the tip of the rod, I know we've got 47 feet of fly line out there, the optimum casting or length of line for the optimum cast when we're looking to distance cast. So we're looking about 60, 65 feet, something like that out there already um, for the point fly. So it's a fair range we're look, looking at already. On the cast, I'm going to bring a bit more line in to start with. And I'm going to just put it out to straighten everything up, okay? On the haul, it has a slightly different performance, if you like. So I'm going to go peel, pluck, pause, and tap. Okay, that's the basic cast. I didn't do anything in my left hand then. On the haul, we start to use the left hand more. This is the one, the hand that really does the work. And um, so, so as we come to lift it off, we start the peel. I'm going to do it in simple stages, okay? So we start the peel, and I lift it off. And as I lift it, I'm going to haul with my left hand, okay? I'm going to haul with my left hand. I'm going to haul there, okay? So as I lift it off, I peel and I haul with my left hand. And what happens when you do that is your left hand finishes up as far away from your body as possible. So I haul, so I peel it, haul, and there's my left hand out there. And you'll see many people will then try to cast from that position with their hand still out there, and they go that, then back to the standard overhead cast. On the double haul, what we have is we peel it, we haul it, we feed it, and then haul again. So that's really important is the feed. So you need to get this, the two hands together when the line is straight behind you to bring that forward cast forward to get any distance. So, so I'm going to go into the, to the first haul and it's really, really important to get that second feed. And that's the feed that's really important because what you're actually doing is getting your hands back together. But as the line comes back through and starts to straighten behind you, the actual line will pull through the rings of the rod, the same as it would going out in the front, but it needs to do the same behind you. And when it does that, it's important to feed your hand to hold onto the line, feed your hand up. You can let it feed through your fingers as well, but then be ready to grip the line to bring it forward on the front cast. So I'm going to do it now. So I'm going to peel, haul, feed. Okay. So my hands, both my hands are together now. And then as I come forward on the front cast, I'm going to haul again in my left hand. They're two together. And as I come forward, I'm going to drop my left hand. I'm going to hold onto the line to start with. Then I'm going to let the line feed out to get distance. So I come forward on the front haul. And it goes out like that. Whole, whole exercise now, I'm going to peel, haul, feed and haul in one exercise. And my right hand's actually not doing very much at all. It's my left hand that's doing all the work. So I'm going to peel, haul, feed and haul. And that's the, that's the double haul cast, if you like. It actually works a little bit better when, when, um, when there's more line out because you can actually feel it flexing better. And in fact, it, it can be useful to use a slightly heavier line when you're practicing, especially if you're out on the, the cricket field or the park or somewhere, uh, rather than on the lake, because you can actually feel it actually working and the line wants to drag it more. Peel, haul, feed, and haul again. And that's the front cast. That's gone out there some 60 odd feet now straight away. In fact, that's, I know how far that is, it's 47 feet plus the, the 16 foot tip, so we're at 63 feet there. Um, and that's the, the perfect loading point now to get an extended cast, which is what we're looking for off a bank on a big still water like this if we need it. We're going to go and fish in a moment where the wind is more in our favour and we're going to go and have a try over there as well. But um, in fact, there's a fish just risen there. So we'll see if we can catch that one and uh, I'm going to have a go for it. It's nice today to have a bit of overcast conditions because when it's bright and sunny, there's a big fish just risen out there. When it's bright and sunny, it can be um, it can put the fish down. They've got no eyelids and everything, or anything like that, and um, they can go down. Yeah, there's definitely fish moving here to the left. They are a good distance out, mind but These fish here are renowned for fighting hard. Where they, where they come from at uh, the local hatchery here, they've got running water and the fish are so fit and strong. 
It's amazing. And this one's no exception. What I've done is I've put on a slightly heavier fly on the point just to get it just under the surface and moved it a lot quicker. Fish won't come into the static fly, but they actually move into the fly which has got the tail on it and uh, moving quite quickly, so that's what they need. Well, that's what we come for here for to Wimbledon. One of these fantastic fish, got a lovely tail on it, and everything's fit as anything. Um, what I did on this occasion, the fish are feeding quite a long way out actually, and uh, it's useful to be able to get that line out as far as we could. It was caught at a decent range, and um, but on a, on a faster retrieve, I was having to give it a quick roly poly retrieve. And the fly with a bit of a tail on it as well, I'll show you the fly. This is the fly we used to, to give it a bit more movement and everything, and that was enough. Well, we just had a fish from the place where we started just now, but we'll come around here now because it was getting a bit quiet over there. We've seen a couple of fish moving here. We know what the method is now as well. The fish are slightly deeper, and I've got a fly on the point that's got a light, slight weight to the head, making it a bit more movement, and it's got a black tail to it too, so it seems quite effective. And uh, the secret has been also to not only reach the fish, but be able to get that fly moving quite quickly. So we've gone from a very slow or static retrieve almost and slow figure of eight to a more um, accelerated um, retrieve and the fish that's not stimulated them to take the fly so I'm going to try here we've seen a couple of fish moving here and then we'll see how we get on. Oh, gone out there now. Well, we've come around to this other side of the lake here. We've, we do have the wind slightly in our favour, I must say, but um, we've still had to fish a long way out to catch these fish. These fish are rising out by the boys. They're all moving out by the boys out there, which is a long way out. You can just see one of them just turn out there now. That's a long cast from here. In fact, that's probably out of range. But with this line and with that double haul, we can actually reach them. And this is the result of doing, being able to do that. It's absolutely fantastic. And this is what you really come to big water for. So just to recap then, to reach these fish that have now moved out in this brighter weather, we want to haul it, feed it, haul again as we let it go forward, and then feed it again to extend the line as we're doing it. And we do that, that's our cycle. And I'm going to do it a couple of times just to, to extend our cast and then let it all go. So it's haul, feed, haul, feed, haul, feed, haul, feed, and haul. And that's the whole lot gone.
let the fly go down a little bit more then. I'll keep it off the top if I can because that's when they come off. A lot of people will hold the rod up and high in the air, but actually when you've got the rod in the air, it's the least resistance you've got on the fish. So that's really useful when you've got it in close. But when it's at range, you want to keep a bit of anchor on the fish so it doesn't come off. So I tend to drop the rod like that when the fish is running. Oh yeah, another fish from out by the boys out there. It's important on a big water like this to be able to reach that drop off. And uh, obviously the custom we've been able to use today has, has helped us to do that. We've got a bit of wind in our favour as well at the moment, although wind is actually beautiful. It's lovely and sunny. Um, there's people out everywhere. Um, there's a guy in the woods there with a chainsaw. There's another one out here streaming, I think. But um, everybody's out having a, a good time in the lovely weather. And this could not be better. Here's yet another one of, of Wimbledon silver glistening rainbows. Absolutely beautiful. This fish about about three and a half, nearly four pounds probably. And uh, like the others, they're holding slightly further offshore. You've got to be able to reach them. I mean, they're on a drop off. It's probably about six to ten feet of water. It's very shallow in this bay just here. But um, the fish aren't in tight. But they're out roughly where the first buoys are, where those boats are, and that sort of thing. And uh, as long as you can reach them, the fish will actually see the fly. They sometimes hear the plop. It's only a small little beaded fly, but. Um, They'll follow it in and, and if you get the retrieve right, then uh, you can encourage them to take. And this is absolutely superb. It's lovely fishing. Fantastic here. So there you go. A great end to a great day. And I hope that helps with fishing on a large still water, casting techniques. And I'd also like to add uh, great thanks to Mark Underhill and Southwest Lakes Trust because this really is a fantastic venue. And if you ever get a chance, you've got to come here and try it. <laughs>